Welcome back to another episode of Scott Reads Comics. Today we continue our coverage of the Legends Limited Series from DC Comics 1986 with Legends number three. Look at this gorgeous cover by uh, John Byrne. And uh, we see on it uh, one of the main villains of the piece, Brimstone. In the background we see Images of Superman, Changeling, Flash, and Batman kind of looking on, but they're not there physically because we'll find out in the story they've been placed to the sidelines. And in the foreground here on our cover, we see the protagonists of the piece, the Suicide Squad, the newly formed Suicide Squad, members of Task Force X. And we can see... Um, Brimstone is atop Mount Rushmore, threatening one of the great icons of our country. So, awesome cover, great setup for Legends number three. And here we are, our uh, splash page. We have um, our title, Send for the Suicide Squad. Writer, or plotter, John Ostrander. Scripter, Len Wein. John Byrne, penciler, Carl Kessler, Kessel, inker, Steve Haney, letterer, Tom Zuko, colorist, Mike Gold, editor. Great uh, splash page here. Um, sort of three quarters of the page because uh, one quarter of each page in this book is going to be taken up by a secondary, almost trailing story that features uh, events on, on um, Apocalypse. So we'll get into that. It's going to be a little challenging, I think, to kind of read this one through with you, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best here. But here we see um, Titan's Tower on a private island in Manhattan's East River, where the crisp autumn air is filled today not with the usual song of the birds and the pungent scent of turning leaves, but with the mindless chanting of anti-heroic slogans and the shaking of furious fists. Titans go home. The crowd shouts, "Down with superheroes!" and they. They're, they are picketing outside Titan's Tower. Meanwhile, in our trailing story on Apocalypse, while the universe away on the bleak and smoldering planet Apocalypse, the hazy air is filled as ever with the acrid stench of sulfur and the mocking rasp of a madman's laughter. So in Titan's Tower, we have Flash, uh, who used to be not too long ago, Kid Flash, and Changeling. And they are upset because they are essentially on house arrest and sent to mind them is Sarge Steele, a longtime uh, governmental character from the uh, DC Universe, sort of the equivalent of Marvel's uh, uh, Henry Peter Gyrick, but maybe a little bit less of a jerk than Gyrick. But Sarge Steele has the uh, um, iconic left fist made of steel. And he says to them, doesn't much matter to me whose fault it is changing. The commander in chief has issued an edict and Sarge Steele is here to make sure it gets obeyed. If you remember in Legends number two, Ronald Reagan made, the president Ronald Reagan made the fateful decision to uh, issue an executive order uh, banning all superhero activity until the crisis in the country passes, the crisis of uh, uh, protest against superheroes all ginned up by the supernaturally um, charismatic G. Gordon Godfrey, a.k.a. Glorious Godfrey. So the neat thing, too, that's going to go through this issue, at least for the first part of it, is um, Wien and Ostrander are going to use this secondary story that runs across the bottom of every page to kind of fill us in on what's happened in the previous two issues. So it's a great way to provide that exposition to folks who just picked this up for the first time and didn't get issues one and two. And a flash protests. You can't just hold us prisoner like this steel, costumed or otherwise. We have the same rights as anyone else. That's for the courts to decide, Flash. All I know is that if you attempt to leave here, I've been ordered to stop you, if necessary, with extreme prejudice. And you can see he's got his hands on a, um, a pistol there. And these two, changing, awesome shot here of changing, transforming into a lion. Burn in Kessel, again, just killing it on this art. 
burn really good at just drawing animals, um, dinosaurs, anything of that nature. He's he just excels at. In addition, obviously, to the human form, but in, in his just his ability to twist bodies and show bodies in motion and show the figure um, is always just so pleasing to, to see on the page. And Kessel's just a, a fantastic finisher for Burns pencils. This is no joke, kids. I can shoot you if I have to, but they're, they're not having it. They're calling his bluff. Your choice, Steele, Flash says. We're trusting you to make the right one. So Sarge Steele puts his pistol up, obviously doesn't shoot them, and uh, kind of gives them credit for their chutzpah. Uh, meanwhile, we have our first shot of the protagonists, the anti-heroes, if you will, in this uh, little tale. While in a hidden bunker that America's military refuses to admit even exists. Well, let's say we get the show on the road, eh? Captain Boomerang and a Jack what like is to be kept waiting. Pardon me for my uh, Australian accent. Could not resist. I don't know about the Enchantress or me old mate Blockbuster, Amanda Madeer, but I'm feeling a bit naked without me boomerangs in hand. Any chance one speaking to the right gent in charge about getting them back? Awesome shot here, too, of um, the uh, Suicide Squad, this iteration of the Suicide Squad, at least part of it. We get to see who our members are. Enchantress, Blockbuster, and of course, here is the um, amazing Amanda Waller. You really don't listen, do you, Aussie? And we'll get back to that in a second. I just want to quickly revisit our trailing story here. The tower that is home and headquarters to the granite-faced grotesquerie who is absolute ruler of the desolate world. And we see the figure of Apocalypse here, or uh, not Apocalypse, of um, Darkseid here um, in the window. At any moment now, phase three of Operation Humiliation will begin. Before I move on, great house ad here for the three newest new Superman titles. Once again, post-crisis Superman has been relaunched. Uh, Burn and Austin are handling Superman. Burn and Giordano, the action comics, the Superman team up title. And Jerry Ordway uh, and Marv Wolfman are handling Adventures of Superman. Very cool. Waller is not having any of Captain Boomerang's guff. For the last time, I am in charge. I am the gent in charge. And the name is Mrs. Waller. Uh, you ever call me Amanda? or a Sheila or Madeer again, and you'll be using those cockeyed sticks of yours as splints. So she really gives it to him. And here we have our other team members. Uh, Rick Flagg, still as charming as ever, I see Mrs. Waller. Captain Boomerang, I'm Colonel Rick Flagg. The two behind me are the Bronze Tiger and Deadshot. Together with those of you already here, we make up the core of Task Force X. I trust Mrs. Waller has explained the deal to you. I explained that, it, that if he accepts the mission, succeeds in the mission, and somehow manages to survive the mission, all current criminal charges against him will be dropped. Sounds sweet enough, Boomerang replies. Not that I trust any of you carvers for a minute. There's something weird going on around here, and I want to know what, what it is before I, and then before you can say another word, Clack, they slap a, a bracelet on him. And in our trailing story, we have this gorgeous uh, close-up of um, Darkseid's craggy face. Soon now, the Earth's mightiest legends will be no more than dust, and that miserable world will at last be ripe for the picking. So here, it's explained in no uncertain terms to Boomerang and uh, Deadshot, who already knows the deal, that um, these explosive bracelets are being placed on them because they're frankly not to be trusted. And so um, if they stray too far from Rick Flag, they'll blow their arm off or give them a nasty shock, one or the other. And Deadshot's ready to get into it. Enough small talk already. You've collected all of us criminals and misfits here for a reason, Flyboy. Don't you think it's, a, it's time you finally told us what this so-called high-risk mission is? And here we see Amanda Waller showing them their target. 
That's easy, Deadshot. It's your job to eliminate him. Take a good look at Brimstone, mister, and try not to wet your pants. As a kid, reading this, I mean, I was 16 years old. I was in, man. I was 100% in. I loved Amanda Waller from the jet. And each panel that she gets uh, FaceTime in just makes me love her more. And she's just, aw just awesome. And unlike anything we had seen to that point, really, in comics. And uh, just credit to Wayne and, and, and um, John Ostrander for bringing her to life. But great shot here of Brimstone, obviously threatening uh, Mount Rushmore, so we know we're, we're in for a fight later. And here, back on our trailing story, um, Darkseid, again, is having this back and forth with the Phantom Stranger. Ironic, is it not, my friend? Now where us villains seek to accomplish what its heroes could not, the destruction of my fiery agent Brimstone. Despite your confidence, Darkseid, your plan will ultimately fail. There are such fundamental errors in your thinking that you cannot begin to see them. Meanwhile, we have Billy Batson still agonizing over the idea that he caused the death of Macro Man way back in issue number one. It was a setup by Darkseid. We're going to see that uh, exposition revealed again here in a little bit. Uh, but again, he's telling himself he's never again going to transform into Shazam. Um, People, more erudite art critics than me, uh, accuse John Byrne of not being able to draw children. It's never really been an issue for me. I think his kids are fine. Um, you know, it's, it's, he's so good with the human form that I never really noticed any issues with his ability or lack of ability to actually draw kids. So this, this Billy Batson looks fine. I will say that sometimes he's a bit shrunken or lengthened based on the panel. Like here, he looks much younger than maybe a 10 or 11 year old kid should be. I think that's his age. But here he meets the young girl we saw in the last issue, uh, Lisa. My name is Lisa. I got separated from my mom and dad by the crowd and I'm a little scared. What's your name? It's Billy, Lisa, and I'm scared too. So they're kindred spirits here, find each other. So here, Desaad is about to provide us all the exposition we need. If we missed issues one and two, or, or one or two, um, we're going to get all the exposition we need through Desaad's retro screen, an excellent um, uh, plot device. Meanwhile, Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. There's our quarry dead ahead. Any last questions? Just one, mate. Is it too late to change my mind? And Brimstone notices their approach. Welcome, sinners. Brimstone has been expecting you. I presume you seek to save these four false idols from my flaming wrath. But no power on all the earth will stay the fallen angel from his appointed task. Just skak shoom. Just a fantastic panel here. Great. Again, credit to colorist Tom Zuko for um, taking what's essentially this this black and white image with limited detail and bringing it to life with color and lack of color, just spotting those blacks in there and, and uh, really uh, just showing the scale. And this, this particular fight is really going to be about scale, and we're going to see that as we move through it. And here we see Deadshot with this specialized weapon. You really expect me to bring Brimstone down with this? Our analysis, Rick Flagg says, that the monster is actually composed of superheated hydrogen plasma given form by, by a several sophisticated magnetic fields. And the experimental laser rifle you're holding has been specifically designated to penetrate that field. So here, Darkseid is bloviating about how his plan, well, Darkseid's plan has begun to work, and we're about to see more of it unfold. But back to our action. The trick is to, is to get you a clear shot at the nexus of those magnetic fields, dead shot. And that's where Blockbuster comes in. So this is awesome. This, all the action with Blockbuster in this is incredible. And keep in mind, Byrne had just, I think, left DC, um, left Fantastic Four to, to come over to DC. So he'd been drawing characters like The Thing and uh, certainly no stranger to, um, to drawing uh, super strong characters and depicting them in action here. 
Sasquatch 2 on Alpha Flight. Hulk, he had, he had a run on Hulk. So Blockbuster, no problem. Burn just steps right in. And man, does this look good. Swiftly, savagely, the monstrous man brute sinks his spade-like fingers into the rocky ground beneath Brimstone's feet and with an almost casual shrug, uplifts him. So not much for dialogue. He's just sort of... And you can see, again, this panel here just communicates the scale of what we're dealing with. This tiny dot down here is Blockbuster lifting this multi, multi thousand ton piece of rock and earth up and toppling brimstone in a great panel. Not to be outdone, uh, Boomerang does try to pitch in. He is game. You can call him a coward or a schemer or whatever, but um, through, throughout the uh, issues of the Suicide Squad, uh, Captain Boomerang could, uh, could be counted on to come through now and again. So that oversized cover is way out of my, my league. But if there is one thing, I ain't, it's a quitter. So let's see how old Goliath likes the ta taste of me baffle rangs. So he's going to throw some boomerangs at him. Here we're getting the story of how G. Gordon Godfrey in Darkseid's, um, at Darkseid's behest, is sowing dissent and chaos in America. Back to our fight. The uh, baffle rangs have little to no effect on Brimstone. Maybe distract him a little. And uh, he tries to blast the Suicide Squad. And here we see a great shot. Again, uh, these two um, facing just a wall of fire. We have uh, Enchantress and Bronze Tiger. Both great costumes. I love them. I keep trying to transmute the plasma into something less dangerous. But it seems to be sentient and thus immune to my mystical power. Keep trying, June Moon, or for that behemoth barbecues us. That's precisely what I intend to do, Bronze Tiger. And please... Call me the Enchantress. So we have a little wry smile, maybe a little wicked smile there. Trailing story here, we're getting that exposition I, I talked about. We can see Macro Man again. Uh, they have obviously have footage of his battle. We see Billy Batson transforming into Shazam for the first time back in issue one to fight him. Meanwhile, we have the action shifting away from our fight in... Um, Mount, on Mount Rushmore, back to uh, Gotham City. Cut to a private hospital in the heart of Gotham City, where a grim Bruce Wayne maintains a painful vigil. So here, Bruce is out of costume, out of his Batman costume, and he's, we see um, Robin um, is in the hospital, pretty badly beat up uh, and recovering, but feeling like he failed Bruce, and Bruce is assuring him that he didn't. And they can hear the protesting and stuff going on outside, all the chaos. And Robin is, is losing hope. I mean, I was almost killed by the very people I'm supposed to be protecting. I can't believe that it was intentional, Bruce says. Goaded by G. Gordon Godfrey, they were out of control, didn't know what they were doing. So Bruce, being the keen detective that he is, can sense that there might be something preternatural going on here. This isn't just normal mob violence. Robin's still um, a bit hopeless, and Bruce leaves the hospital saying, you're wrong, Jay. This is Jason Todd, Robin. The president is wrong, and maybe it's time I proved it to you both, the only way I know how. Great shot here of Bruce leaving, and we see the silhouette of Batman in the back, so we are foreshadowing, we know what's gonna happen. Here is the fateful setup that has caused Billy Batson to swear never to transform into Shazam again on our trailing story on the bottom page here. We see Macro Man grabbing him. He had those explosives uh, implanted in his chest. It was all a setup to escape. Um, Batson is goaded into saying Shazam to transform back into his human form and that shock uh, causes Macro Man to explode, setting up uh, Shazam as, a, as an unlikely murderer. While back at Mount Rushmore, well, Flyboy, you were right about this mission. It's definitely suicide. You sound almost pleased, Flag says. Hey, you do your job, Colonel. I'll do mine. This gun's only good for one shot, remember? But you just keep Blockbuster running interference so I can get it close enough to, do, to, uh, to Brimstone, and I promise you, one shot is all I'll need great panel there and burn and castle really draw a great dead shot 
This great ISO, this great, very narrow ISO on Rift Flag is awesome too, limbed by the flames. Maybe the personality profile on Deadshot is right. Maybe he does have a death wish. And that's going to play out through the whole Suicide Squad series. Nice setup for that. And then meanwhile, great out, another great action sequence of Blockbuster here doing his thing. That's it, mate. Keep that gargantuan cobber on his toes. And we may yet get out of all this mess alive. And all Blockbuster could do is just continue to grunt and growl. But Blockbuster's time on this earth <laughs> is about to come to an end. Why do you persist, sinners? When you know, when you know there is no hope, Brimstone is the agent of a dark and angry god. Come to cleanse the earth of its false gods and graven idols. So you can see this massive hand sweeping down, getting ready to envelop uh, Blockbuster, and he does. And ye, Brutus Sinner, have been singularly honored, for ye have been the first to be cleansed. So he, in this great, again, great show the scale of the, of the, of the immensity of the challenge here, the, the size of Brimstone's hand as it comes sweeping down, grabs the, um, the, the uh, helpless blockbuster, and then drops his incinerated form. And great shot here of Boomerang reacting. Struth, he fried the poor Kaba. Blockbuster is dead. All we see is a smoldering hand with charred flesh and smoke rising from it. Here we continue the tale. Billy Batson um, realizes that he's, he's a murderer, or he thinks he is. Meanwhile, back at our fight. There, I've got Brimstone's magnetic nexus lined up in my sights, but there's some sort of gizmo right on the bullseye. Then what are you waiting for, Deadshot? That monster is almost on top of us. Shoot already, shoot! And again, great use of color by Tom Zuko to show just the proximity of brimstone to these two. This just sort of red heat, just ready to, ready to fall on them like a wave. Whatever you say, spoil sport. And Deadshot takes his one shot with this experimental rifle. No, such pain, this cannot be. Help me, Father, help thy faithful servant. And we can see the Deadshot hits the bullseye here. For an interminable instant, the behemoth known as Brimstone glows bright with the light of a thousand suns. And here in our trailing story, we see that we the Desaad recounts the creation of Brimstone, just as he's dying here in this panel right above it. And a great uh, panel of Brimstone's ultimate end here on the next page. And then, like some humanoid Nova, Brimstone explodes literally coming apart at the seams. Father, why have you forsaken me? And then Tiger says, Enchantress, that fireball, it's coming straight at us. Ha, no problem, pussycat. Now that that flaming plasma is no longer sentient, one simple enchantment and voila, instant snowstorm. So she changes the fireball, the gigantic fireball into a snowstorm, exalting in the use of her powers. Here we see in our recountment of the last two issues, Justice League Detroit there, um, struggling under all that debris. And th the fate of the JL Detroit team is um, covered in a couple of crossovers, and I may, I may cover those um, on the show as well. And here actually are the crossovers which I've spoken of. This is the uh, beginning of the end of the Justice League of America, in which we see our four members of our Detroit team, pictured on the cover by Luke McDonald. Firestorm uh, also crossing over into Legends since he was in our first issue. And um, Phantom Stranger, who's been a um, foil of Darkseid throughout the series so far. He gets coverage in Secret Origins. So company-wide, they're getting into Legends. Back to our fight. I said that Enchantress was exalting in our powers, perhaps a little too much. And now that Brimstone has been dealt with, it is time to deal with you. Time for the Enchantress to deal with all of you. Wrong, little lady. One properly applied nerve pinch 
And for you, at least, it's nap time. No, it isn't fair. The whole world could have been mine. And you see this awesome shot of Tiger just streaking in and um, putting the pinch on uh, Enchantress, taking her out of action before she can get out of control. That's what he was there for, and that's what he did. Well, you were right, Flag. Using too much magic drove poor June right over to her dark side again. That's why you were here, Tiger, to keep her in line. Nice work, if you can get it, Deadshot says. I don't believe it. Except for poor Blockbuster, we're all still alive. But we weren't supposed to be. Were we, Flag? We were only a suicide squad. Just so much cannon fodder. We was all supposed to die, weren't we? Everyone on this mission was considered expendable boomerang, including me. Great words there. And that kind of Kyle's boomerang. Oh, never mind. Here, Desaad and our trailing stories recounting Robin's uh, savage uh, beating at the hands of uh, the, the mob. And now, after the action at Mount Rushmore, Suicide Squad was successful in their opening mission. Um, we're back at the White House and we see President Reagan strolling in, um, in the garden with um, Superman. What do you think, Superman? That's a judgment call I'd hesitate to make, Mr. President, though I'm certain you're doing what you believe is best. I'm sure everything will work out fine, sir, in the long run. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to. And you needn't worry, sir. Though I strongly disagree with your edict, I'll fully intend to obey it. You have my word on that. No man's word is worth more than you, super, you Superman, and Godspeed. So here, Dasad's really enjoying himself. Really great image of Dasad just yucking it up over, um, <laughs> over the success of the plan and their influence on getting President Reagan to, uh, to do the um, executive order. Meanwhile, um, in another uh, part of our story here, while in a comfortable, uh, comfortably appointed suburban home, I'd really like to thank you for taking me in this way, Mr. and Mrs. Sutton. So Lisa has brought Billy Batson home and he is having dinner with her family. Meanwhile, uh, Lisa's younger sister is playing with some action figures, which we'll see here in a second. And Batson's explaining to them that he has no parents. Um, meanwhile, our trailing story back on Apocalypse, Darkseid has a few words to say. And even though the newly formed Task Force X has destroyed my fiery agent, one of their own has fallen as well. Brimstone can be recreated, but now a second of Earth's legends has come to an end. The war goes well. Calling Blockbuster a legend is a bit of a stretch, but uh, I, I'll, I'll roll with it. I like it. So here we see Lisa's father is influenced by Godfrey. Here is his, he's ever present here. I see him on TV. She's completely, this little girl, again, completely immune to Godfrey's um, influence. But the father is enraged by it, seeing it on television. He grabs the Superman action figure and hurls it in the fire. And then here in our trailing story, we see the, uh, the Phantom Stranger actually take a little bit of action. I have seen enough. Gloat if you will, Dark Side, but yours has been a perfect victory at best. How so, Stranger? No, my precious retro screen. We can see a great shot of um, Phantom Stranger using his mystic powers. He shuts the screen down. Ooh, I have to take a minute to comment on this pretty awesome house ad for a Matt Wagner Demon Limited series. I did not pick this up at the time. Um, foolishly, wasn't that into Matt Wagner or the Demon at the time. And uh, if I ever see this in the dollar bins, I'll be snatching it up. I, I don't see it. I do a lot of dollar bin diving, and I don't see this series in there very much. So if I ever come across it, we'll cover it here. Um, so Batson is uh, shocked by uh, Lisa's father's action, violent action of throwing the action figure into the flames, and it kind of triggers him, so he runs away. And uh, Lisa goes outside to comfort him. Billy, please, what's wrong? It was happening again. Somebody burning because of him, because of Captain Marvel. Billy, what are you saying? That isn't true. Captain Marvel is a hero, and I believe in heroes. Don't you? 
I don't know anymore, Lisa. I just don't know. So that's kind of the underpinning of this whole series. The idea that adults are ready to cast off their belief in superheroes, but children are not so ready to give up um, their love and adoration and belief in the idea of the superhero. And it's kind of on maybe a, law, uh, a higher level of rumination on the idea of um, adults giving up on superhero comics maybe and going to, to, to other things, possibly. It's a bit of a read into it, but also I think it works on both levels. Anyway, in our trailing story, you see Darkseid? That is why your defeat is inevitable, for that is the one battlefield on which you can never hope to triumph, the hearts and minds of children. The children will always believe in heroes. So yeah, Phantom Stranger is, is telling us um, Dark Side's, the flaw in Darkseid's plan. But here, Darkseid always has an answer. In our final page, it might be the best page in the whole issue. Just absolutely incredible. Um, it's like a second splash page at the end. They are young, stranger. They will learn, but the point may soon be moot. For there may be no heroes left to believe in once I unleash my wondrous war hounds. So this figure of Darkseid is just amazing. Just filled with chunky power, I would say. Totally incredible, totally menacing. And Byrne excels, I said, at drawing beasts, animals, dinosaurs. But he's also really good at drawing that techno fantasy armor. So here he blends those two skills into this design for the Warhound. And it just looks awesome. So next month, cry havoc. We're going to have some havoc next month in Legends number 4 as these Warhounds are unleashed on Earth. Meanwhile, back in our letters page... Mike Gold explains that he has sent photocopied um, copies of Legends Number 1 out to certain prolific letter writers so that they can get early comments so they don't have to wait too long to get to run letters on the series, in the series, because it is only a six-issue miniseries. And um, there are some interesting comments here, but I'll just point out that T.M. Maple, who was one of my favorite letter writers as a kid and, and got, inspired me to write letters to comics, because he was so printed so often and had such erudite and insightful comments on the stories. He got sent some photocopies, so he, he has a uh, more than a few words to say about issue one of Legends, but I'll just read the final, the final paragraph because it's fun. Task Force X also looks interesting, but I think I've got this one pegged. You say that Wonder Woman won't show up until later issues. Fair enough. But look at what we've got here. A distinguished colonel meeting a tough, confident female at the Pentagon? Yes, it's obvious. Rick Flagg is the new Steve Trevor, and Amanda Waller is the new Wonder Woman. Admit it, I've got you on this one, right? A bit cheeky from Mr. Mabel, but fun. A little fun little uh, joke there um, on the arrival of Task Force X in the series. So we get a tease here at the end of the letter column. Next month, Superman takes on President Reagan. Dr. Fate takes on Superman. Things get heavy all over the DC Universe. And we'll all be here to join in the fun. Mike Gold. So great job. That is Legends number three. The action debut of Task Force X, a.k.a. The Suicide Squad. Brought to us by Ostrander, Ween, Byrne, and Kessel. And uh, another great issue of Legends. And we'll be back for number four. If you like this episode of Scott Reed's Comics, please uh, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll bring you more soon. Thank you.